Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. So I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone for their kind words, kind comments and lovely support that I've gotten through this channel. And yeah, I just wanted to say thank you and I appreciate it. Also a big thank you to those who have suggested this case. If you do want any specific cases, please let me know in any of the comments down below. But today we're going to talk about the case of Asanda Beninzi and that was a suggested case by a couple of you. And Asanda Beninzi was a prolific serial killer in South Africa, Cape Town specifically. And I do just want to point out that there's not a lot of information about Asanda or this case particularly. So I'm just going to try to give you as much information as I can and as much information that I could read from articles or newspaper articles that I got. And lastly, before getting into this case, I do just want to say and give a warning that I do use language that is of a sexual and distressing nature. So please be aware of that before you get into this video. But that being said, if you want to hear about the case of Asanda Beninzi, then let's get into it. Intended for mature audiences only. So Asanda Beninzi was born in 1983. The month, we do not know, but the year was 1983. And I'm not sure if he stayed in and was born in Guguletu, but he did stay in Guguletu for majority of his life. And that is a place in Cape Town, which is about 20 minutes away from Cape Town. And sadly, Asanda and his family grew up extremely poor. They did struggle to put food on the table each night. And when Asanda was very young, he did start with his criminal activities. And he became friends with a man named Mtutuzeli Nombeu. And his nickname was Wax. But basically, Mtutuzeli and Asanda would do all these naughty things together. And they would start off with petty crimes such as pickpocketing and robbery. And yes, in the bigger sense of things, robbery is not a petty crime. But Compared to what they did later on in years, it is this big of a crime. But as these boys started to get older, they started to get involved in more serious crime. And they also started to get involved in a much deeper crime syndicate that was in Cape Town. And sadly, Asanda and Mutuzeli started taking drugs, particularly Mandrax. And if you don't know what Mandrax is, according to the Cape Town Drug Counseling Centre, Mandrax is a small tablet that is highly, highly addictive and apparently Mandrax kind of slows down your nervous system so you're nice and chilled after you take these drugs. And generally people will smoke Mandrax, kind of like crush it up and mix it with weed or dacha and then they would put it in the pipe and then smoke it. Or obviously you could swallow it or inject it but this is not a story on how to take drugs. This is just what Asanda and Tutuzeli took. And with that long story aside, Asanda and Tutuzeli were only focused on Mandrax and money, and that's all they wanted. Also, side note, this bird in the background, if you know my previous videos, I do not like the sound of birds, so it always triggers me in, in my back of my head. But I'm sorry about the bird noise. And of course, uh, Sanda and Tutuzeli had nothing to do. You know, they would just sit around, smoke drugs, they were both unemployed. But around May 2001, with being bored and with being high, came trouble and they started to get involved with a group of men that were not the best role models. These men included Zolani Dozi, also known as Zakes, Garel Bosman, Nunturu and Wax who was Mutuzeli. But that was basically the group or their gang and clique of friends. So these boys would go around hijacking cars particularly, that was kind of what they did most of the time. And Asanda even said, quote, neither Wax nor I worked and we needed money to live and to buy Mandrax and other drugs. To get money, we decided to hijack cars so that we could kidnap the occupants and rob them of their money and personal effects so that we could strip the cars and sell the parts. End quote. So Asanda and Ntutuzeli knew exactly what they were doing. Clearly, they went out with a particular plan in mind. So now let's get on to what Asanda and his gang actually did and the horrible crimes that they committed. So in a time frame, the crimes started happening in May of 2001. So they started with crimes such as hijacking and robbing of occupants and people in general. But on the 20th of June, 2001, they were driving around Google Air to looking for trouble clearly because they found a couple that were driving into a driveway or they were just about to pull near their house. And there was a man and a woman inside a minibus kind of taxi kind of thing. And so they were pulling around and as they were pulling around, Asanda and his gang decided to now intercept them and they tried to hijack the people that were in the car. So there is no detail on who, but 
when one of the men saw that one of the people in this Volkswagen minibus was a woman, they proceeded to sexually assault her. And unfortunately, then all the other men took turns as well. And then after they were all done, they got out, they robbed both of them, and then they drove away. Now, this next incident, I'm not sure if it was the next day or the same day, but basically a taxi driver named Mohammed Brand and one of his last passengers, who was named Ryan Masetu, were driving in the minibus and they were going through Google Air to, I'm assuming, to take maybe Ryan home. But they were hijacked by Asunder and both men were shot execution style in the back of the head and left. A couple weeks later, the body of Mkwebalo Menenzi was found near the side of the road in Delft. And he had also been shot execution style at the back of the head. So those were the crimes that happened between May and June. But then on the 22nd of July, 2001, Asanda and Tutazeli, they hijacked a man named Richard Dunchies and a lady named Faith Quelane. And they were both held up at gunpoint. And the next part I'm going to tell you is in Asanda's own words. Quote, we drove to the Zuelicha area where we both raped the woman. I locked the man in the boot of the car. When we finished raping the woman, we took the couple to an unused shack in Nyanga. Wax shot them both in the head. We took their money, a cell phone, and their VW. End quote. Then, on the 25th of July, 2001, Stanley Kumalo and Ntombeka Matumana. This couple was parked in Guguletu, and the couple was kidnapped, shot, and left for dead. Thankfully, I don't think that the couple was actually murdered by a sunder. I think that they possibly survived the attack, but it's still horrific nonetheless. Then on the 8th of August, 2001, Asanda and Tutazeli had been given a lift by a couple named Bakweni and Mbambisa. They were on their way to the Maru Maru area, and I think it's near Nyanga. Then after they arrived in Nyanga, Tutazeli and Asanda hijacked the couple. Tutazeli shot Bokweni while he was lying face down in the dirt and he shot him at the back of the head and Mbisa was still in the back of the car and she was obviously terrified. Then Asanda and Tutuzeli drove with Mbambisa to Zwelicha where she was sexually assaulted by both men and she was then fatally shot in the back of the head. Now Asanda and Tutuzeli were tired and they decided now that they wanted to get high again. So they took the exact same car they just murdered Bokweni and Mbabisa in basically and decided to drive to a Google to Shabin to get some drugs and Tutuzeli decided that he was going to rob Ntiki because she was apparently the drug dealer that sold them drugs usually. So according to Asanda, quote, when we arrived we pretended to be the police and shouted that she should open the door. When a woman opened the door we pretended that we wanted to buy Mandrax tablet. When she said that she did not have any we pointed our guns at her and robbed her of her money. Wax then shot her in the head, killing her. End quote. Now, where the cops were with all of these murders happening with the exact same kind of M.O., we don't know. So Asanda and his gang moved between Delft and Kukuletu. That was kind of their area of expertise, I guess. Basically where most of the crimes would happen. But in August 2001, while Asunder and his gang were busy causing trouble as usual, they decided now that they needed money. And the quickest form of money that they could get besides hijacking was to rob someone in their house. So they were looking around and they found a house that they thought would be perfect for this. So in they go and they meet a family of four, which they all held up by gunpoint. And in this house was Felicity Adams, who was 39 at the time, her husband, Marius Adams, who was 34 at the time, and their daughters, Shawnee, who was 10 at the time, and Alexis, who was 16 at the time. And while they were in the house, Mrs. Adams pleaded that they do anything that they want to as long as they leave their children and their family alone. So while the gangsters and Asanda were all in the house, they looked around, but they ended up taking nothing. So rightfully so, as soon as Asanda and his gang members left, the Adams family called the police. And the police kind of knew who Asanda and his gang were because they had been causing trouble for a while now. And unfortunately, the police did not act quickly enough because 
a couple days after Asanda had first entered the house, they returned again and the Adams family was woken up in the middle of the night to loud noises, banging and glass breaking and this was Asanda and his gang members entering the house and sadly Asanda had lined up every single member of the Adams family and executed them one by one at the back of the head. So now obviously the police had just heard about Asanda and his gangs from the Adams family a couple days before so they put two and two together and a couple days after the Adams family was murdered police were knocking at Asanda's door and Asanda was taken into custody. Now obviously news travels very fast because just before police got to Mungtutu Zeli's house he ended up shooting himself in the head before police could get to him because he did not want to be in custody or charged for anything that he had done and obviously Mungtutu Zeli was never punished for any of his crimes because he had committed suicide but once police had Asanda in custody he started singing like a canary. He was saying everything that they did every single detail he said and police said that Asanda did show a lot of remorse he was very very hurt and sad for the things that he had done to these people and he said that even though he was high he knew exactly what he was doing and when Asanda Beninzi's trial first started he had 51 charges against his name and with all the evidence and the testimony from Asanda he was found guilty of only 49 of the 51 charges which is still a lot and these charges included 15 counts of kidnapping, 12 counts of robbery with aggravating circumstances, 1 of indecent assault, 5 of rape, 3 of attempted murder and 1 of housebreaking. And the judge on Asanda Berninzi's trial who was Mr Justice Abe Motala found Asanda not guilty of the unauthorized use of firearms and it actually emerged after trial that the gun used in the killings of all these people belonged to the former gang member who was named Mutu Dezeli or Wax for short. So in total Asanda Berninzi participated in 18 different murders. Asanda and one of his gang members were sentenced to 67 years in prison and these were only for the charges of aggravated assault, kidnapping and robbery. Asanda Beninzi was also sentenced to 19 different life sentences, bringing his total with everything included to 189 years in prison. And the judge on this case did feel bad for Asanda with everything that happened to him in his younger years. However, he said that no matter what circumstances or mitigating circumstances that Asanda had, nothing could ever give justice or make any sense as to why he murdered and sexually assaulted his victims as well if he just wanted money for Mandrax or money in general. The judge also said that there's no excuse for that. Even if you say you came from a terrible background, there's no excuse, which I tend to agree with. I think that a lot of Asunders, as well as his gang members, crimes were very unnecessary. I think that there were a lot of mitigating factors in Asunders' case. However, like the judge said, they don't make or there's no excuse for why he continued to be so down the rabbit hole with his other crimes. And I think that he may have just been so deep in his crimes that nothing was really affecting him anymore anyway. So he thought, oh, well, I've done it once. I might as well continue to do it. But that was the Asanda Beninzi case. I hope that you were entertained by it. And please leave any suggestions that you want me to talk about down in the comments below. Thank you again so much for joining me. And thank you again for all the support. And I'll see you again next week. Bye.